Good morning, and welcome to Sacred Heart of Jesus Catholic Church. A special welcome to all of our visitors. Our Mass this morning is offered in honor of Jamie Sheehafer, given by Irish Sheehafer. And the flowers at the altar this weekend are in honor of Carla Keith. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. My dear brothers and sisters in Christ, in order that we might celebrate these sacred mysteries in a worthy fashion, let us call to mind our sins. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask, Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life.
let us pray. O God, who have prepared for those who love you good things which no eye can see, fill our hearts, we pray, with the warmth of your love, so that loving you in all things and above all things, we may attain your promises which surpass every human desire. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen.
The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you. At that time, Jesus withdrew to the region of Tyre and Sidon. And behold, a Canaanite woman of that district came and called out, Have pity on me, Lord, son of David. My daughter is tormented by a demon. But Jesus did not say a word in answer to her. Jesus' disciples came and asked him, Send her away, for she keeps calling out after us. He said in reply, I was sent only to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. But the woman came and did Jesus homage, saying, Lord, help me. He said in reply, It is not right to take the food of the children and throw it to the dogs. She said, Please, Lord, for even the dogs eat the scraps that fall from the table of their masters. Then Jesus said to her in reply, O woman, great is your faith. Let it be done for you as you wish. And the woman's daughter was healed from that hour. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Well, Now I'm back from a few days of getting to go down home to Mobile County, see Mom and Daddy, and they send their greetings. Mom and Daddy said, tell y'all hey, and uh, and tell y'all thank you very much for uh, giving me an altar to celebrate Mass at and for then letting me come down to see them a little bit. So it's always nice to go home, though. It's always nice to be at home, to be home with the people that are familiar, with the places that are familiar, You know the customs, you know the language, you know how to get around. Of course, that's not hard in Citronelle because it's about that big. You can get anywhere you need to go in about five minutes. But actually, today, the scriptures speak to us not about being at home. They speak to us about being a foreigner. Because in our reading from the Old Testament and our gospel, and Paul too, they speak about what it means to be in a place that's not your own, a place that's not your home. The people of Israel felt like they were very much at home, particularly in their relationship to God. They were special. They had a special status, special place. And they kind of took advantage of the fact that they were at home and got really complacent. But today in the gospel, we see the Canaanite woman. Now keep in mind that Canaan is that land today that is Palestine and Jordan, a little bit. And the Hebrew people came out of Egypt, you remember, and they made their dwelling in the promised land, which was Canaan. So they actually displaced the Canaanite people. You know, there's a lot of that in the Bible, fighting with the Canaanites, overcoming the Canaanites, but they were still Canaanites around. And so this woman is actually in her ancestral land, but she is now a foreigner. She has been rendered a foreigner because she's not part of the people of Israel. She doesn't know all the customs and she doesn't know all the ways and she doesn't know all the ins and outs. So she's a foreigner, she's outside. In Spanish we say extranjero, the one who is on the outside. Or the Greeks say, Tseno, the one that is all the other, y'all, the others. She's the other. And so when she starts to speak to Jesus, though, we see something wonderful happen. The dialogue between Jesus and the Canaanite woman is sort of a beautiful capsule of developing a life of prayer and conversation with Jesus, which is all beautiful. It shows us the stages. Because at first she says to him, Lord, son of David. Well, friends, what we have to know is that son of David is a political title. That is a political title. So she is not a Hebrew person. She's a Canaanite. 
but she knows that it's important. She knows just enough to know that it's important to them that the Messiah be the son of David. So she uses a title that's kind of buttering Jesus up. And don't we do the same thing sometimes when we start the prayer? We want to butter Jesus up. Oh, Lord, you are most holy. You are the most high. We butter him up because we want him to give us something. That's how a lot of us can start in prayer. But notice that when she's buttering Jesus up, she receives no answer. She receives no answer. And then she persists. And now she has a prayer that is different entirely in tone. She simply says, Lord, help me. So she's moved from what is sort of a political and kind of inauthentic way of speaking to speaking from her heart, to simply asking Jesus for what she needs. It's a simple, beautiful, and perfect prayer. Lord, help me. Nothing in between. Lord, help me. And it's then that Jesus begins to speak to her. He starts to speak back. But he kind of gives her a little bit of a hard way to go because he needs to make sure that she's not still stuck back in that political speech about trying to butter Jesus up with a bunch of fancy words. But she tells him again what her needs are. And she gives him a loving and genuine plea. And then the Lord says, great is your faith, and answers her prayer. So we learn from this that Jesus now has taken her from being one on the outside through prayer to being one on the inside. He's brought her home. He's brought her to that beautiful, homey place where she can speak to him and understand his love and feel that belonging. Because remember, the disciples were like, send her away, she's hollering. Now she belongs. And at Jesus' feet, she is at home. So friends, actually, the scriptures today teach us clearly, we are all foreigners in this world. In this life, we're foreigners because this is not our home. The places that we were born are not our actual home. Our home is prepared for us. But we actually have a road map and an indicator of our home because right here is an image of the table in our home. The place that we all feel at home, together, comfortable. Because friends, let me tell you something. Any of us can go anywhere in this world we can go to Thailand, Ukraine, Korea. We can go anywhere in the world. And if we go to Mass in the Roman Catholic Church, even if we don't speak the language, you know what's going on. You know exactly what's happening. And you know who loves you. And you know who touches you. And you know who listens to your prayer. So we are at home. And this table is only an image of the table in our home in heaven. So we make our little pilgrimage down the aisle during our lives to try and come home. And so we praise God, though, that when we come to him in authentic prayer, he turns and listens to us. He wants us to speak from our heart to him beautifully with our genuine needs and concerns and desires. And we speak them before this altar. And then he looks back at us and assures us that our prayers are answered. So this beautiful place is a foretaste of our home in the kingdom of heaven where none of us will be foreigners. Right now, we're all in solidarity with one another because you know what foreigners do in a foreign land? They come together. They help one another. They reach out because they all sort of speak the same language and understand the same things. And the Catholic people throughout the world are the same way. We are foreigners in a foreign land we're coming to our home. But on the way, we have to be together and love one another and help one another so that we feel that home before we even get there. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen.
I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead, the life of the world to come. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ responds to the prayer made in faith. Like the Canaanite woman, let us cry out to the Lord with confidence. And our response is, Lord, hear our prayer. For our holy church, that it always welcome the foreigner and the outcast, especially those of us who have strayed from the path and wish to return to worship the Lord in spirit and in truth. Let us pray to the Lord. For those who seek peace and rest from anxiety and worry, that they find solace and reassurance in times of silent prayer and contemplation, let us pray to the Lord. That those who are sick and suffering in our community and around the world might encounter healing and restoration in Christ. Let us pray to the Lord. For those who have suffered the terrible effects of the explosion in Beirut, that aided by generous help from all over the world, that the one refuge for Christians in the Middle East might be strengthened and aided in this difficult time, let us pray to the Lord. For those who work in health care and in public service, that they might be blessed through the powerful intercession of St. Joseph in their work at this time and be protected from all harm. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord. For all those who have passed through the door of death to receive their eternal reward, especially those in our own families, that their faith in the real presence of Christ in the Eucharist bring them to the fullness of his kingdom. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord God, as you receive the prayers we make, grant us a strong faith and an abiding trust in your Son, our Redeemer, who lives and reigns forever and ever.
pray, sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Receive our oblation, O Lord, by which is brought about a glorious exchange, that by offering what you have given, we may merit to receive your very self through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For by his birth he brought renewal to humanity's fallen state, and by his suffering canceled out our sins. By his rising from the dead he has opened the way to eternal life, and by ascending to you, O Father, he has unlocked the gates of heaven. And so with the company of angels and saints, we sing the hymn of your praise, as without end we acclaim. Holy created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy, and you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, in giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. 
Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you willed to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant, Francis, our Pope, and Stephen, our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory, through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress. As we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours. Now Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
let us pray. Made partakers of Christ through these sacraments, we humbly implore your mercy, Lord, that conformed to his image on earth, we may merit also to be his co-heirs in heaven, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated. So about four and a half months ago, we started to hear about this coronavirus pandemic and it was tearing up Italy, you know, starting in Milan and then it was kind of creeping down the Italian peninsula to Rome. And well, we have some of our Birmingham people who were in Rome at that time, our seminarian Daniel Sessions. And uh, so there were some phone calls and the next thing we knew, about the 1st of April, Daniel had escaped Italy and ended up in Aniston. So, but it was providential, and uh, we certainly wish that you could have stayed in Rome in circumstances that weren't like these, but it's been wonderful to have you here. And now Daniel gets ready to go back to Italy to finish his uh, studies in theology, to be ordained ultimately priest of Jesus Christ for the Diocese of Birmingham. He'll go back to second theology. But uh, for these past four months, it's been a great pleasure to have uh, you here with us in the parish. Daniel's done a lot behind the scenes. I mean, uh, so many of you, you know, because of our circumstances, we haven't been able to uh, get together the way we'd like to, uh, but Daniel has been doing all kinds of stuff behind the scenes, not the least of which is keeping me from losing my mind. <laughs> Through Holy Week and all the celebrations that we were not able to have people in church, Daniel was there to teach uh, me how to uh, record everything and upload everything and have good ideas and and, and really just help us accomplish all the things that we needed to accomplish to keep moving forward for our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. So I feel eternally grateful uh, to you for all that you've done. And uh, we wish you all the best as you get to go back to, to Bella Roma and see His Holiness the Pope and, and send him our greetings and our love from Aniston. So, so let's have a wonderful round of applause for Daniel and all that he's done. But I would like to invite you to come forward and share just a few words with us, please. So I won't keep you all long. As Father said, uh, under different circumstances, I would have been able to get to know many more of you um, more intimately, more deeply. Um, for example, to know what your chins and your noses look like. <laughs> but under the current circumstances, that just wasn't, um, just wasn't doable. But thank you even though I couldn't come into your homes, thank you for welcoming me into your hearts and into your prayers. Um, when I left Rome, and I mean, it was the middle of the night, midnight, I was told I was coming home, and 5 a.m. I was on my way to the airport. Um, I didn't know what was gonna happen, didn't know where I was gonna go, and God's hand was in all of it because I ended up here in this wonderful little parish. And to learn from Father John, who you know, taught me in high school, in you know, the classroom, and now to teach me outside of the classroom was a great joy and a great pleasure. Um, and when I, you know, when I arrived to Aniston, the first thing I saw was in the rectory, they had, they had given flowers in the name of the parish. And so I knew I was in good hands when that was what I arrived to. Thank you so much. Um, I'll keep you in my prayers in Rome and all the holy sites. And if you have any specific intentions, send them to the office. I'll, I'll, to, it's a great joy to be able to bring those intentions to the holy sites in Rome. But thank you so much for everything, for your prayers especially, and please continue to keep me in your prayers, and you all will continue to be in mine. God bless. Thank you very much, Daniel. And of course, Daniel studies where I studied, and one of the great privileges is that um, our American seminarians do have the ability to study some of them at right next to St. Peter's Basilica, at the tomb of St. Peter, who was, of course, a foreigner in Rome. But because of his confession of faith, made Rome the center of our faith, as we are Roman Catholics, his confession of faith and his martyrdom there, in truth to the apostolic witness of Jesus Christ. And he can walk right across the piazza there 
and pray for us at St. Peter's tomb. So thank you for that offering of prayers. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.